And you know what you are? You're a silly little kid. Well, it's better than being a sour old man like you. <laughs> the creation of the 1957 TV series Leave It to Beaver brought together a talented cast that would become synonymous with the idealized image of American family life in the 1950s. The show's producers, Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher, aimed to create a family-friendly program that would resonate with middle-class audiences. The search for the perfect actors to bring the Cleaver family to life began with the role of Ward Cleaver, the father figure. Hugh Beaumont, a seasoned actor with experience in film, television, and radio, was ultimately cast in the part. Beaumont's calm and steady demeanor, as well as his ability to convey warmth and understanding, made him an ideal choice for the role. Finding the right actress to play June Cleaver, the mother, proved to be a more challenging task. After a series of auditions, Barbara Billingsley emerged as the top contender. Her natural grace, combined with her ability to exude both strength and vulnerability, made her the perfect choice for the role. The Cleaver children were another story. The producers wanted actors who could portray the ups and downs of growing up in a realistic and relatable way. Tony Dow, a former swimming champion, was cast as Wally Cleaver, the older brother. His athletic background and natural charisma made him a perfect fit for the role. The search for the perfect beaver cleaver, the younger brother, was a lengthy one. After reviewing hundreds of audition tapes, the producers found their beaver in Jerry Mathers, a young actor with a natural talent for comedy. Mathers' ability to convey both innocence and mischief made him the ideal choice for the role. Once the main cast was in place, the producers turned their attention to the supporting characters. Eddie Haskell, Wally's mischievous best friend, was played by Ken Osmond. Osmond's ability to balance charm and deviousness made him the perfect choice for the role. The chemistry between the cast members was evident from the start. During the audition process, it became clear that Beaumont, Billingsley, Dow, Mathers, and Osmond had a natural rapport that translated seamlessly to the screen. This chemistry, combined with the show's wholesome depiction of family life, helped Leave It to Beaver become a beloved classic that continues to captivate audiences today. Between right and wrong. So I'm just going to leave this up to you. You can either return those presents tomorrow. The directorial vision behind 1957's Leave It to Beaver was largely shaped by the show's co-creator and principal director, Joe Connolly. Connolly, who had previously worked as a writer for radio and television, brought a unique sensibility to the series. He aimed to create a wholesome, family-friendly show that would resonate with middle-class American audiences. Connolly's approach to directing was characterized by a light touch and a focus on naturalism. He encouraged the cast to improvise and to bring their own experiences to their performances. This approach helped to create a warm, believable on-screen dynamic between the show's characters. One of Connolly's key creative influences was the work of Frank Capra, the celebrated director of films such as It's a Wonderful Life and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Like Capra, Connolly was interested in exploring the lives of ordinary people and the values that shaped their communities. In terms of visual style, Connolly favored a simple, uncluttered aesthetic. He used a muted color palette and shot most scenes in medium or close-up, with a minimum of camera movement. This approach helped to focus attention on the characters and their interactions. Collaboration was also a key part of Connolly's directorial vision. He worked closely with the show's writers, producers, and cast to ensure that everyone was on the same page creatively. He also encouraged input from the crew, many of whom had been with him since his early days in radio. In short, Joe Connolly's directorial vision for Leave it to Beaver was marked by a focus on naturalism, a respect for the everyday lives of ordinary people, and a commitment to collaboration. These qualities helped to make the show a classic of American television. I don't know. I guess because you don't see many guys like Dudley. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver, a classic 1950s TV series, has many fascinating stories behind it. Did you know the show was based on the creator's own family experiences? or that the network executives initially rejected the show. There are also many fun facts about the actors and their characters. One of my favorite characters is Beaver, played by Jerry Mathers. His curiosity and innocence always bring a smile to my face. But which character is your favorite? Throughout its run, Leave it to Beaver tackled many serious issues, including bullying, honesty, and responsibility. Some episodes may even surprise or shock you. And while the show is known for its humor, and heartwarming moments, it also has its share of sad events. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Leave it to Beaver?
We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As we explore more about this classic TV series, prepare to discover even more funny, shocking, and sad facts. So stay tuned. I mean, it's a big city in Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, you guys all set? In the late 1950s, the production of the classic television series, Leave it to Beaver, brought wholesome family entertainment to living rooms across America. The show's set design was crucial in creating the idyllic, suburban setting of the fictional town of Mayfield. The production team meticulously designed and built the Cleaver's home interior on a soundstage, paying close attention to every detail, from the cozy living room to the kitchen adorned with vintage appliances. The exterior shots of the Cleaver residence were filmed at several locations in California. The show's producers chose a house in the Los Angeles suburb of Studio City, which became the iconic image of the Cleaver family home. To maintain privacy and ensure continuity in the series, the production team constructed a facade of the house on the Universal Studios lot, where most of the exterior shots were filmed. Filming a weekly television series in the 1950s came with its share of logistical challenges. With limited technology and resources, the production team had to be creative in their problem solving. For instance, they developed a system of cables and pulleys to move set pieces and props quickly and efficiently between scenes. This innovative technique allowed the crew to transform the Cleaver's living room into a classroom or a backyard in a matter of minutes. Despite these advancements, the production team still relied on traditional filming methods. They used three cameras to capture the action from various angles, ensuring smooth editing and seamless transitions between scenes. The show's writers and directors also employed the use of multiple takes to perfect each scene, providing actors with the opportunity to refine their performances. Leave it to Beaver's production team faced the challenge of filming a family-friendly show during the era of live television. To create a safe and comfortable environment for the young cast members, the crew implemented strict guidelines and precautions. For example, they limited the working hours for child actors and provided them with tutors on set to ensure their education continued during filming. In conclusion, the production of Leave it to Beaver was a complex process that required careful planning, innovative techniques, and a commitment to creating a nurturing environment for its young cast. The show's lasting impact on American television is a testament to the dedication and hard work of its production team, who brought this classic series to life with meticulous attention to detail and an unwavering commitment to quality. Quality? Well, Dad'll pay for the gas, won't he? <laughs> well, that's not what I'm talking about. The beloved television series, Leave it to Beaver, first aired in 1957, and quickly became a classic of its time, the show followed the adventures of a young boy named Beaver, his brother Wally, and their parents June and Ward Cleaver. Set in the idyllic suburban town of Mayfield, the series explored the everyday challenges and joys of growing up in the 1950s and 60s. Leave it to Beaver was created by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher, two experienced writers who had previously worked on popular radio and television programs. The show was produced by a number of companies, including Cairo Productions and Screen Gems, and ran for six seasons, totaling 234 episodes. The cast of Leave it to Beaver included several talented actors who brought the Cleaver family and their friends to life. Tony Dow played the role of Wally, the Cleaver's teenage son, while Jerry Mathers starred as Beaver. Barbara Billingsley and Hugh Beaumont portrayed June and Ward Cleaver, the loving and supportive parents who guided their sons through the ups and downs of life. The show's writers drew on their own experiences and those of their friends and families to create realistic and relatable storylines. Many of the episodes dealt with common issues faced by children and teenagers, such as school, friendships, and personal responsibility. The show also tackled more serious topics, such as bullying, peer pressure, and the importance of honesty and integrity. Leave it to Beaver was filmed in black and white and featured a classic, wholesome aesthetic that has endured for decades. The show's set design, costumes, and music all contributed to its timeless appeal, making it a beloved part of American television history. Despite its age, Leave it to Beaver remains popular with audiences of all ages. The show's themes and messages continue to resonate with viewers, and its memorable characters and iconic moments have become a part of popular culture. Whether you're a fan of classic television or simply looking for a nostalgic trip down memory lane, Leave it to Beaver is a show that is sure to delight and entertain. Come on, Dad. See you later. <laughs> Beaver, don't forget your clarinet. 
The creation of a musical score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of filmmaking as it greatly contributes to the narrative and emotional tone. In the case of the 1957 TV series Leave it to Beaver, the music perfectly complements the wholesome and heartwarming stories of an all-American family. The show's theme song, composed by David Carton, is a memorable tune that instantly brings viewers into the world of the Beaver Cleaver and his family. The catchy melody, played on a piano and accompanied by light percussion, sets the stage for the show's lighthearted and optimistic tone. When it comes to the background score, the show relies on a mix of classical pieces and original compositions. The classical selections, such as those by Mozart and Beethoven, add a touch of sophistication and elegance to the scenes. Meanwhile, the original compositions, often featuring a small ensemble of strings and woodwinds, provide a sense of warmth and intimacy. Composer Arnold Black, who worked on the show, once stated, the music for Leave It to Beaver was meant to be unobtrusive and supportive of the storyline. We wanted to enhance the emotional moments without overpowering the dialogue or the actor's performances. One notable example of the score's effectiveness is in the episode Beaver's Crush, where the young beaver develops a crush on his teacher. The background music, featuring soft strings and a gentle melody, perfectly captures the innocence and vulnerability of a young boy's first love. The soundtrack also includes popular songs from the 1950s, which further immerses the audience in the show's time period. These songs, often heard playing on a radio in the background, serve as a subtle reminder of the cultural influences of the era. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack of Leave It to Beaver play a significant role in setting the show's tone and enhancing its emotional moments. Through a combination of classical pieces, original compositions, and popular songs, the music perfectly complements the stories of this classic TV series. For you, you don't want to jeopardize his future. Well, it's certainly what we're concerned with. In Leave It to Beaver, Hugh Beaumont, who played Ward Cleaver, also contributed to the series as a writer and director. He wrote one episode on his own and helped with a few others without credit. Beaumont also directed 23 episodes. Before marrying the director, Barbara Billingsley was married to Roy Kalino, who was previously married to actress Pamela Oster, known as Pamela Kalino during their marriage. Billingsley's co-star, Jerry Mathers, had a music career outside of acting. He played in a rock band called Beaver and the Trappers. Well, I'm not going with this. Oh, yes, you are. Now, it's your fault forgetting about the party. There's no time to do it. One of the most iconic scenes in Leave It to Beaver occurs in the episode titled Beaver's Short Pants. In this scene, Beaver's older brother, Wally, gives him a hard time about wearing short pants to school. The scene is a classic example of the sibling rivalry that is a recurring theme in the series. The direction in this scene is masterful, with the camera focusing on the reactions of both Beaver and Wally as they engage in their playful banter. The performances are also noteworthy, with Tony Dow delivering a perfectly timed comedic performance and Jerry Mathers showing off his acting chops as the put-upon younger brother. The cinematography is simple but effective, with a camera capturing the action in a series of tight shots that highlight the emotions of the characters. The use of natural lighting and a muted color palette adds to the nostalgic feel of the scene. This scene has had a lasting impact on audiences who can relate to the sibling rivalry and playful banter that is on display. In fact, the scene has become so iconic that it has been referenced and parodied in countless other TV shows and movies. According to Tony Dow, who played Wally, the scene was a lot of fun to film. We had a great time doing that scene, he said in an interview. Jerry and I had a lot of chemistry and we played off each other really well. Overall, this scene is a perfect example of why Leave It to Beaver has endured as a classic of American television. With its relatable characters, sharp writing, and impeccable direction, it remains a beloved piece of Americana. You call a cab? Uh, twice. Larry! Larry! In the classic television series Leave It to Beaver, Ward Cleaver's profession remains a mystery, as all that is known is that he works in an office building in downtown Mayfield, presumably from 9-5. Moving on to another actor from the show, Madge Blake, who played Dick Grayson's Aunt Harry Cooper, is often believed to have been created for the TV show. However, this is not the case. Aunt Harriet first appeared in Detective Comics No. 328 in June 1964, two years before the TV show. Some details from the television series, such as her last name and her status as a widow, were added to the comic stories in Detective Comics Hash 373. Stephen Talbot, who played Gilbert Bates on Leave it to Beaver, 
has had a successful career beyond the show. His 1986 documentary, World Without Walls, about African aviator Beryl Markham, co-produced with Joan Saffa and Judy Flannery, brought Markham's once-forgotten memoir, West with the Night, back into the spotlight. The movie was never produced, but his commission allowed Talbot to pay the down payment on a house in San Francisco for his family. He quickly returned to the work he knew best writing and producing public television documentaries. Oh, he and Eddie Haskell went over to walk by Mary Ellen Rogers' house. I thought they did that yesterday. Well... Leave it to Beaver, a 1950s TV series, left an indelible mark on American culture and society. The show resonated with audiences due to its relatable characters and wholesome portrayal of family life. It presented the Cleavers, an idealized middle-class American family, which many viewers found both comforting and aspirational. The series tackled various social themes relevant to the time, such as childhood innocence, responsibility, and the challenges of growing up. By exploring these issues, the show contributed to broader cultural discussions and provided a platform for families to engage with one another on such topics. Moreover, Leave it to Beaver significantly influenced popular culture. Its portrayal of American family life became a touchstone for future TV shows and movies. The series also introduced catchphrases and memorable scenes that remain part of the cultural lexicon today. In terms of cultural impact, the show underscored the importance of the nuclear family and traditional gender roles. While these depictions may seem outdated by today's standards, they were influential in shaping societal attitudes towards family and gender during the 1950s and 1960s. Furthermore, Leave it to Beaver served as a reflection of American society during a time of significant cultural change. The series provided a window into the values, beliefs, and aspirations of middle-class America, offering a glimpse into the country's collective psyche during this period. In essence, Leave it to Beaver's cultural and social impact can be seen in its ability to resonate with audiences, influence pop culture, and contribute to discussions on relevant social or cultural themes. The show's enduring popularity and cultural significance attest to its lasting impact on American society. A thing like this could put a curse on the whole family. <laughs> In Leave it to Beaver, Madge Blake, who played Beaver's schoolteacher, crossed paths with several future Batman stars in her career. Interestingly, she did not share any scenes with them during their appearances on her previous series, The Real McCoys. Barbara Billingsley, known for her role as June Cleaver, had a family background that was quite different from her characters. Her mother worked in a factory, while her father served as the chief of police. The sponsors of Leave it to Beaver were diverse, with General Electric light bulbs and Purina Dog Chow supporting the show. These sponsors played a significant role in bringing this classic to television screens. Well, she didn't wreck it or anything. No. Leave it to Beaver the 1957 TV series received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show was praised for its realistic portrayal of middle-class American family life, with the New York Times noting its authentic detail and warm humor. The show's writers were commended for their ability to tackle complex issues in a way that was both relatable and understandable for young viewers. The show stars, including Jerry Mathers as the lovable beaver and Barbara Billingsley as his wise mother June, were also highly regarded. Mather's performance was described as natural and appealing by the New York Times, while Billingsley's portrayal of June was seen as a sympathetic and understanding counterpoint to the more authoritarian father figure, Ward, played by Hugh Beaumont. The show was also a commercial success, running for six seasons and producing 234 episodes. It has since become a classic of American television, with reruns still airing today. In terms of awards, Leave it to Beaver was nominated for two Primetime Emmy Awards in 1958, including Outstanding Comedy Series and Outstanding Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role in a Comedy Series for Beaumont. While it did not win in either category, the nominations themselves were a testament to the show's quality and popularity. The accolades received by Leave it to Beaver are significant for those involved in the show, as they highlight the impact and influence that the series had on American television and culture. The show's realistic portrayal of family life and relatable characters helped to establish the sitcom as a popular and enduring genre while its talented cast and crew contributed to its lasting success. The show's enduring popularity and cultural significance are a testament to its quality and relevance, and it continues to be celebrated and appreciated by audiences today. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
How come you didn't? In the classic television series Leave It to Beaver, Edgar Buchanan's character once provided dental work to Glenn Ford, using whiskey as an anesthetic. Every third sip, Glenn would take a drink, and Edgar would follow suit. Richard Deacon, another actor in the show, spent his childhood in Binghamton, New York, just a mile away from Rod Serling, creator of The Twilight Zone. Deacon graduated from Binghamton Central High School in 1938. Interestingly, June, a character in Leave It to Beaver, was unique in her honesty, as she was the only character who never lied throughout the series. This aspect added a layer of authenticity to her role, making her stand out among the other characters. Like, uh, did they ever take a big stick and hit you with it? <laughs> no, they never did anything like that. You wanna in the late 1950s, the Leave It to Beaver cast and crew found themselves in the midst of a television revolution. This classic show, focusing on the everyday life of the Cleaver family, captured the hearts of many. Barbara Billingsley, who played June Cleaver, was known for her impeccable style and grace. Interestingly, she had a secret weapon, a small mirror hidden in her purse, which she used to discreetly check her teeth between takes. Hugh Beaumont, who portrayed Ward Cleaver, was not only an actor but also a writer and director. He often provided valuable input during the filming process, contributing to the show's success. The child actors, Tony Dow and Jerry Mathers, faced unique challenges. For instance, they had to repeat their lines multiple times to ensure the sound was just right. This was because their voices had not yet fully matured, causing inconsistencies in audio recordings. Behind the scenes, the set of the Cleaver home was a bustling hub of activity. Despite the chaos, the crew managed to maintain a family-like atmosphere, often going out of their way to make the young actors feel comfortable and at ease. One heartwarming anecdote involves a surprise birthday party thrown for Jerry Mathers. The crew transformed the set into a festive celebration, complete with decorations and a birthday cake. This moment of camaraderie further solidified the bonds between the cast and crew. In conclusion, the making of Leave it to Beaver was filled with memorable moments and endearing anecdotes, offering a fascinating glimpse into the world of 1950s television production. It's fun for you boys. I let you do as you want, come and go as you want, and I trusted you. Although Leave it to Beaver is now considered a classic television series from the 1950s, it never achieved the same level of popularity as some of its contemporaries, never once reaching the top 10 in the ratings. The show's patriarch, Hugh Beaumont, eventually left the world of show business in the late 1960s to start a second career as a Christmas tree farmer in Minnesota. However, a stroke in 1972 forced him to slow down. Stephen Talbot, who played the character of Beaver's friend Gilbert, has a notable connection to the present day. He is, in fact, the uncle of Joe Talbot, the director of the critically acclaimed film The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Despite the passage of time, the impact of Leave it to Beaver continues to be felt in the world of entertainment, with its talented cast and crew leaving their mark on the industry in various ways. It's downright disobedience. I don't know. Leave it to Beaver, the 1957 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. As one of the first shows to focus on the everyday life of a typical American family, it paved the way for many future sitcoms. The program's innovative approach to storytelling, which centered around the experiences of children, set it apart from its contemporaries. The show's impact on future filmmaking is evident in the numerous spin-offs and adaptations it inspired. The warm and relatable portrayal of family life in the series proved to be a successful formula, leading to the creation of similar shows such as The Andy Griffith Show and Father Knows Best. Moreover, the show's influence extends to modern cinema. Many filmmakers today cite Leave it to Beaver as a source of inspiration for their work. The show's ability to tackle complex issues with humor and sensitivity has been particularly influential. In terms of subsequent works, Leave it to Beaver has inspired several adaptations and spin-offs. In 1997, a feature film based on the series was released, introducing a new generation to the world of the Cleavers. Additionally, the show's enduring popularity has led to the creation of various merchandise and memorabilia. In conclusion, Leave it to Beaver's lasting legacy and influence on film history and future filmmaking is undeniable. Its impact can be seen in the many shows and films it inspired, as well as in the enduring appeal of its warm and relatable portrayal of family life. And a few that there ain't. <laughs> Andy, are you really gonna make me a monkey's hand? Jerry Mathers gained fame for his role 
as the title character in the popular TV series Leave It to Beaver, which aired in 1957. Mather's portrayal of Beaver remains his most well-known acting role to this day. Tony Dow, who played Beaver's older brother Wally in the show, is survived by his wife, son, brother, and granddaughter. Dow's performance in Leave It to Beaver contributed to the show's success and solidified his place in television history. Interestingly, Madge Blake, who played Beaver's neighbor and aunt, had a unique background. Both she and her husband worked for the government and held top secret clearance during the construction of the detonator for the atomic bomb in Utah. This just goes to show that the actors behind the beloved characters of Leave It to Beaver had lives and experiences beyond the show. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean I'm not allowed to be happy, Wally. <laughs> sure, Ma. Interestingly, Barbara Billingsley, known for her role in this classic television show, was once related by marriage to Peter Billingsley's father. Peter Billingsley is best recognized for his starring role in A Christmas Story. The absence of Frank Bank and Ken Osmond in the last two seasons of the show was due to their military service. Both were serving in the armed forces during that time. Hugh Beaumont, who portrayed Ward Cleaver, not only acted but also wrote and directed several episodes of the series. His role as Ward Cleaver was ranked number 28 in TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest TV dads of all time. Pass the cream, dear. It's right there in front of you, dear. In the popular TV series, Leave It to Beaver, the actors playing Beaver and Wally, Jerry Mathers, and Tony Dow were only three years apart in real life, despite the five to six year age gap portrayed on the show. Mathers was born in 1948, while Dow was born in 1945. Barbara Billingsley, who played June Cleaver, began her Hollywood career as a contract player for MGM in 1945, after her Broadway endeavor ended prematurely. She was billed as Barbara Combs during her brief stint on Broadway, but adopted her married name, Barbara Billingsley, for her film and television roles. The town of Mayfield and its inhabitants in Leave it to Beaver were predominantly Caucasian, reflecting the homogeneity prevalent in television at the time. However, there were a few exceptions, such as the Varela family, whose son Chewy, portrayed by Alan Roberts, was Beaver's Spanish-speaking friend. The episode featuring Chewy aired in 1958. Another exception was the African-American maid in the Langley home during the wedding reception in the parking attendance, which was broadcast in 1963. This character, played by Kim Hamilton, was a rare representation of diversity in the series. Deriving? I'm afraid he must be spending an awful lot of money. Don't you think you ought to say something to him? Now, June. In the late 70s and early 80s, Leave It to Beaver co-stars Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow reunited, performing in dinner theaters. Dow's casting in the series was quite accidental. He had no acting experience or aspirations when he tagged along with a friend to the audition and ended up landing the part. The Cleaver's first home in Mayfield, featured in the series, was located at 485 Mapleton Drive, a nod to CBS's New York headquarters address at 485 Madison Avenue during the show's initial season. Later, the family moved to a new home at 211 Pine Street. These specific addresses were intentional choices, adding a layer of realism to the show's setting. Despite his lack of experience, Dow became an essential part of the Leave It to Beaver cast, contributing to the show's lasting impact as a classic family sitcom. Uh, what kind of a club is it? Uh... Well, it's kind of a secret. In the world of 1950s television, Leave It to Beaver stood out as a classic family sitcom. One of its actors, Burt Muston, shared an interesting fun fact on Johnny Carson's show. He had the unique experience of attending the very first World Series in 1903, between Boston and his hometown Pittsburgh. In the original pilot of the series, there was a character similar to Eddie, but he was played by a different boy actor. It wasn't until the third episode, titled New Neighbors, that the Eddie Haskell character, as we know it today with Ken Osmond in the role, made its debut. Another notable actor in the series was John Hoyt. He had a diverse career, appearing in both the original Star Trek series in 1966 and the original Battlestar Galactica series in 1978. This rare accomplishment showcases his versatility and longevity in the industry. On the extension! <laughs> In the second season of the beloved TV series, Leave It to Beaver, a mysterious character named Angela Valentine is introduced. Although never seen directly, she is acknowledged by Miss Landers during a school contest, with the camera focusing on a specific girl in the classroom. The audience is left to assume that this is Angela, based on the reactions of the other students. 
The character of Judy Hensler in the show bears a striking resemblance to the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. This connection adds an intriguing layer to the series, as Judy's mischievous behavior mirrors that of the iconic witch. In the spin-off series Still the Beaver, it is revealed that Ward Cleaver passed away in 1977. This revelation adds depth to the original series, as it sheds light on the characters' futures and the impact of Ward's presence in their lives. In summary, Leave it to Beaver features a hidden character, shares thematic connections with classic films, and provides insight into the characters' futures in later series. Dirty trick, Eddie. Sure it is. That's why it's funny. <laughs> Look, Eddie, you leave my... The popular TV series, Leave it to Beaver, came to an end for several reasons, one of which was the growth and aging of its main characters, Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow. As the actors grew older, the show's focus on a young boy's relationships and innocent misadventures became less relevant. Mathers, who played Beaver, was already a teenager, and the final season saw him in junior high. Marjorie Reynolds, who played the mother of one of the characters, also had an interesting career trajectory. Her daughter, Linda Reynolds, was an actress who later moved into casting. She cast her mother in Kessie Bean and After Mate, but Marjorie's role as the mother of a lady wrestler was deleted before its release. Barbara Billingsley, who played June Cleaver on Leave It to Beaver, had an equally fascinating background. After graduating from high school in Los Angeles, she moved to New York City to seek her first acting break on Broadway instead of Hollywood. In conclusion, the actors and actresses of Leave It to Beaver had diverse and intriguing careers both on and off the screen. Anyway, I think it's sweet of Wally to help him with a newspaper. In the popular TV series Leave It to Beaver, Buddy Joe Hooker, played by Joey Tata, had an unusual claim to fame. He won a date with Farrah Fawcett on the dating game. Wally, portrayed by Tony Dow, had a distinctive nervous habit. When feeling embarrassed or put on the spot, he would run his finger under his nose as if wiping his upper lip. This mannerism was also used by Larry Mandela, played by Robert Rusty Stevens, in a particular episode. Ken Osmond, who played Eddie Haskell in Leave It to Beaver, had an interesting career off-screen. For 18 years, he served as a police officer, mostly assigned to Central Traffic Division. Despite his role in the beloved TV series, he was rarely recognized during his service. His police work was a stark contrast to his portrayal of the sneaky and smooth-talking Eddie Haskell. When you're in high school, it could cause a mess like this. It's all my fault! It's all my fault! Gene. In the third season of this classic, Leave it to Beaver, it is revealed that Tui, played by Tiger Fara, has the real name Brian, making him Brian Tui Brown. Before his acting career, Hugh Beaumont was set to star in a crime thriller called The Sins of Sarah Ferry in 1951. Despite the studio's plans to film in Binghamton and Johnson City, the project was canceled due to its similarity to Double Indemnity and the lack of response from city officials. As for Barbara Billingsley, she was a popular student at George Washington High School and was even voted homecoming queen. You just do as your mother asks. Remember, no teasing and no laughing until we get Beaver straightened out, understand? In the TV series Leave it to Beaver, Richard Deacon's character may have left a lasting impression on viewers, but in reality, he was cremated at Grandview Crematory, with the funeral services handled by Westwood Village Mortuary. Meanwhile, Jerry Mathers, who played the role of Beaver, found guidance in his acting career from the late Barbara Billingsley, who played his on-screen mother. Interestingly, before voicing Nanny on Muppet Babies in 1984, Barbara Billingsley met Jim Henson at a party. This classic show has certainly left its mark on the entertainment industry, with its talented cast and memorable characters. The mentor-mentee relationship between Billingsley and Mathers, as well as Deacon's real-life funeral arrangements, add another layer of intrigue to the show's history. Hello, Violet. I've been looking for you all day. In an interesting turn of events, the debut of the beloved television series Leave It to Beaver coincided with the Soviet Union launching Sputnik on October 4, 1957. This classic show, which follows the life of a young boy named Beaver, made its mark on television history while the world was grappling with the space race. One of the actors in this show was Stephen Talbot, who later coined the tagline for the Frontline World Series on PBS Stories from a Small Planet. Talbot's contribution to the show and his later work in television is noteworthy. Another actor in the series was John Hoyt, who passed away on September 15, 1991, just three weeks shy of his 86th birthday. Hoyt's career spanned over five decades, 
and his work in Leave It to Beaver is still remembered fondly by audiences today. In summary, Leave It to Beaver is a classic television show that has left an indelible mark on the world of television. Its debut on the same day as the Soviet Union's Sputnik launch is a fascinating historical coincidence. Moreover, the contributions of its talented cast members, such as Stephen Talbot and John Hoyt, have added to the show's enduring appeal. He's writing this letter. I think for some reason or other, Beaver's trying to make me out a hero at school. In the classic television series Leave It to Beaver, the Cleaver's hometown is never explicitly identified, but the exterior shots were filmed in Skokie, Illinois. The show's influence extended to the big screen, with the creators of Airplane, initially considering having Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow reprise their roles as Beaver and Wally Cleaver flying the plane in the film. Although the idea was ultimately discarded, Barbara Billingsley made a cameo appearance as the woman who could speak jive. Delving into the background of John Hoyt, who played the role of Mr. Harmon in Leave It to Beaver. He was an accomplished graduate of Yale University. While attending Yale, he served on the editorial board of the campus humor magazine, The Yale Record. These experiences undoubtedly contributed to his successful career in the entertainment industry. Well, yeah, you better get ready if you're going to dinner with us. Oh dear, I'll be ready in just... It is a known fact that many actors and crew members who worked on the film The Conqueror in 1956, including John Hoyt, were diagnosed with cancer in subsequent years. This is a stark reminder of the potential health hazards that can arise from film production. In the first two seasons of Leave It to Beaver, the TV series from the mid-20th century, it seems that every character drives a Ford Motor Company vehicle. However, in season three, there is a noticeable shift, and everyone in Mayfield appears to own a Chrysler Corporation automobile instead. Furthermore, Fred Rutherford, a character in the show, frequently refers to his workplace as the grist mill. This term, while uncommon in modern parlance, was likely more familiar to audiences of the time. Overall, these details offer a glimpse into the production and cultural context of Leave It to Beaver, shedding light on the show's historical significance. Through this is a test. This isn't the kind of a test that's going to affect your marks. So since you all have your test papers and... In the world of Leave It to Beaver, some interesting friendships form behind the scenes. Jerry Weil, who played Beaver's classmate, and Jerry Mathers, the actor who portrayed Beaver, were good friends in real life. It was challenging for them to play enemies on the show. A popular rumor surrounding the series is that notorious rock legend Alice Cooper played the role of Eddie Haskell. However, this is a misinterpretation of an interview where Cooper stated that he was similar to Haskell as a kid. Not that he portrayed him on the show, Tony Dow, who played Wally Cleaver, had a fascinating family background. His mother, Muriel Montrose, was a stunt woman in early westerns, Clara Bow's double, and a Max Senate bathing beauty. His father, John Stevens Dow Jr., was a designer and contractor. This classic TV series, Leave It to Beaver, had a talented cast and crew, contributing to its enduring popularity. Well, the words are okay, but it doesn't sound spontaneous. Do you have fond memories of watching Leave It to Beaver during your childhood? This classic TV series, which first aired in 1957, has left a lasting impact on many viewers. Perhaps you saw yourself in the characters or related to the show's themes of family, friendship, and growing up. Did this series influence your perspective on cinema or inspire you to explore other films and TV shows? Maybe you even started to notice similar themes or character archetypes in other media you consumed. If Leave It to Beaver holds a special place in your heart, we'd love to hear from you. Share your favorite memories or moments from the show and tell us how it impacted you personally. And if you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's celebrate the enduring legacy of classic television and cinema. Around? Yeah, I guess we could. I'll go tell my mother. Okay.